Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick, aka The Limey, and welcome back to the channel. So, on this particular episode, I'm actually going back to a video I did last week, and that video was where we created a multi-action switch. So I had a button to hit during my pauses. The multi-action switch does a few things in a certain order, and then obviously when you press it again, it does everything else that you tell it to in reverse. There is another function that the Stream Decks allow you to do, which is just called a multi-action. Now, this is a little bit different, and I just wanna go into the when to use a multi-action switch versus when to use the multi-action feature. Since recording the video on the multi-action switch, which I use to create my pause scene, and that would allow me to change the scene into a pause state and mute all of my, my audio going out to the stream. I have watched a few more YouTube videos, so I've figured a few more things out, and what I've actually done is I've changed it ever so slightly to just mute my microphone. That means that it leaves the PS4 volume coming through and it leaves any background music coming through. That was the first thing I did on the multi-action switch, which led me to find out all about multi-actions. Let's hop into OBS. I'll show you in the Stream Deck how all this works. So what I wanted to be able to do was to create a way to be able to start the stream with one press of a button. So right now I either go in Streamlabs or on my Stream Deck and I press the Go Live button. From the Go Live button I then select the starting scene that I want, which obviously is the starting scene title. From that point I then mute my microphone, I make sure there's music playing and I make sure the PS4 is either muted or not. So. What I wanted to make sure would happen is in one press of a button, all of those things happen. So the reason I use a multi-action versus a multi-action switch is I only want this one to go one way, okay? So let me show you how I did it and this is the magic behind the multi-action. So currently on the go live function, I've created the multi-action already. So let me show you what that looks like. So right now, when I hit the go live button, what it does is it tells OBS Streamlabs to pop up the starting tile. That's the screen that says stream starting soon. It also tells Streamlabs OBS to go live. It then mutes my microphone, which is the Wave 3, and it mutes the PS4 stream. As this is a multi-action, not a multi-action switch, there's nothing else I need to do on the starting button. So I will then manually change the stream to be the right tile so everyone sees the right setting. Um, and I'll also manually unmute the microphone or unmute the microphone and the PS4, depending on it. Sometimes I like a bit of music playing as the stream starts, just as people are queuing to get into the lobby so they can get ready to watch the stream. Knowing I was able to create a go live multi-action button, I thought to myself, I need to do that on the end of my streams as well. So what I did is I created something very, very similar. So again, on that button press, it moves from the whatever playhead I'm in to the end title. That's the one that says the stream is finishing. Thanks for watching. I then got an option to mute my microphone, mute the PS4, and then what I did is I threw in a small delay. So the delays are measured in milliseconds. So I worked out roughly 60,000 milliseconds. I say I worked it out, I Googled how many milliseconds in one minute. 60,000 milliseconds, and that's what the delay is. After that delay, it tells Streamlabs OBS to end the stream, and then it also tells the Wavelink to unmute my microphone and unmute the PS4. So. Like a lot of these things, if you press the mute button, it's the same action whether you're muting or unmuting. So as we know, I've got a, a multi-action for going live and I've got a multi-action for ending my stream. If things are not in the right state at the right time, then what will happen is if I hit go live and the microphone is already muted, it will then unmute the microphone. Okay, so let me recreate one of the multi-action buttons for you, just so you can see exactly how easy they really are to set up. So the start one is quite simple. The end one is a little bit more involved. So let me recreate the end one for you. So start by dragging a multi-action option from the Stream Deck dropdown on your Elgato Stream Deck. Name it what you want. In my instance, I named it End. 
Once you have it open, remember everything drops into the window to make the rules. So from that point, we go to the Streamlabs OBS option and I drag in the scene. I name the scene so I know exactly where it is. So we'll name that end. I make sure that it's on the drop down and it finishes on the end tile. So from there, I go down to the Wavelength section and I grab myself a mute input. Now I do this twice because I've actually got to mute the microphone and the PS4. Inside the Wavelength, they're set as separate channels. Give them a label. First one becomes Wave 3. I make sure that it's using the Wave 3 option as well as from the stream output. I then rename the second one PS4. Again, make sure that's from the stream output and you select the PS4 option. From there in the stream deck option, there's the delay option. Now again, this is measured in milliseconds. So work out what you think is a good amount of time. Personally for me, I didn't want to go, all right guys, thanks for tuning into the stream and I'm gone. Otherwise there's no point having an end title. So I kind of wanted to give just a bit of time for people to say goodbye to each other, give each other a wave, Tell them they'll see them tomorrow or the next time that we're streaming and they're good to go. So I used one minute. The next thing that we do is we go into the Streamlabs OBS drop down and we look for the tile that's called stream. On this, it'll give you the option to start or end. Then again, I went back down to my wave three, my wave link. I grabbed two mute inputs or one for the wave three, one for the PS4 and reversed everything that I'd already done. Okay, so let's see this work in real life. What I'll do is I'll open OBS Streamlabs and I'll kick off my stream as though I'm playing a normal game. Okay, so we hit the go live button and as you can see, it changes the tile from the middle head gameplay to the starting soon screen. It also mutes my microphone. So if you see on the wave link, you can also see that it mutes the wave three input as well as the PS4. Then when I'm ready to start chatting to people, let the world see me again, I can hit whichever playhead I want, whether that's the bottom, whether it's the middle or a full screen, or even start in the chatting mode, as well as unmute my microphone to sort of say hi to everyone, start the stream. At the end of the stream, you simply hit the end button. As you can see, it populates the stream ended title, it's muted my microphone, it's muted the PS4 again, it'll run for about a minute. So there you have it. After about one minute, it turns everything off, makes the stream go offline and then it unmutes my microphone and it unmutes the PS4 so I'm ready to go again. What this means is if I'm taking a five, 10 minute break and I don't want to leave a pause screen and just leave the stream on, I can hit the end button, it turns everything back to a neutral state. So when I hit the go live button again, it puts everything as it should. So guys, that's a really easy way to start or end your streams. Now again, you can do whatever you want to do with a multi-action. This one was really just to show you the difference between a multi-action versus the multi-action switch. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nick, AKA The Limey, and please make sure you support the channel. Give me a huge thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Tell me what you're doing with your multi-actions on your Elgato Stream Decks. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot.